Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Today's going to be another tutorial on macro photography. Um, I had a good time making the other one, so I thought I'd go ahead and make another one for you guys. Um, but it's being the same kind of thing though. I'm going to show you some footage from the field on location. And then uh, we're going to bring those images back here on the computer. And I'm going to show you how I work them up in Photoshop. So uh, stick around and uh, let's get to it. So I really enjoy going out early in the mornings when I'm doing my macro photography. It's the winds really died down. Um, there's usually still dew on the grass or on the flowers. And one big thing is, you know, when you're trying to find something cool like a butterfly or you know this hornet here or a bee or you know any kind of insect, they usually go into this sort of um, hibernation state overnight. They find their hiding spot and they'll sort of hang out there for the night. But then the next morning when you find them, they're still sort of in this frozen state, which is really cool because then you can just sort of hang out, get some nice macro shots of them, and they're not going to fly away. So you don't, have to, you don't have to chase them or anything like that. So it gives you some really good opportunities for some great macro photography. So I found this Hornet here and I'm shooting him at 200th of a second at f2.8. And I'm also overexposing him a little bit just because he's so dark. So I'm overexposing him by a one and a third stop. And my ISO is around 500. Usually I like to have my ISO a little bit lower. But these days ISO is um, you know, pretty good for in, in most cameras. Especially for the one I'm using, the Fujifilm X-T3. Uh, but it's also compensating a little bit. So I'm shooting at 500 ISO so I can still have that faster shutter speed. Alright, so here's the Hornet. Uh, first thing I usually like to do is crop my images before I start working on them. And let's see, I'm going to crop this guy 60 by 9 and just see what that looks like. And I like that, so I'll just double click that and that'll, that'll uh, finish that crop. And next thing I like to do is just sort of play through these sliders, really. I mean, there's nothing too, uh, too difficult with that, so we're just moving down, move up and down with these sliders. And small adjustments here and there. Bring the highlights down quite a bit. Play with my shadows. The shadows is really going to bring up the body of this hornet. So I'm going to bring up my shadows a little bit more. And bring up my whites. The whites usually give a little bit more of a punch. And bring the blacks down. Well, let's see. I'm going to bring blacks down a little bit. Not too much. And I'm going to bring the clarity up just a little bit with this guy. Just to give the, the horn a little bit punch as well. I'm going to add a little bit more color, a little bit of a vibrance, not too much though. And I never really play with the saturation. Ever since the vibrance came out um, years ago, uh, I don't really play with the saturation that much anymore. The vibrance just um, doesn't really overdo it as much as the saturation does. And I'm going to skip the sharpening for now and I'm going to move down to the lens correction. And I love to vignette my images pretty hard, so I'm going to vignette this good amount. <laughs> and now I'm going to go back up and actually bring the exposure back up a little bit. Just a little bit though. And yeah, just a little bit on the exposure. And now I'm going to go to my local brush because what we're doing right there is global. So those are my global adjustments which um, have a global effect on the whole image. So now I'm going to go to my local brush which is right there. I just clicked on that. And let's see, I'm just going to paint in... I'm going to paint on the Hornet a little bit, so I'm going to brighten him up a little bit more. Not that much more, though. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. So I'm going to hit the left bracket, and then I'll actually make my brush smaller. And just a little bit here and there. So I'm just making small local adjustments there. And that's about it. I don't want to go too much on the Hornet. And now I'm going to make a new adjustment, and I'm going to bring the exposure down. And I'm going to bring my brush back up in size. Big brush with big feather on it. And now on the outsides, I'm going to paint in to make it even a little bit stronger of a vignette. That's pretty good right there. And I'm going to bring this side down a little bit more. And see, you now, now you can see I have... I made some adjustments over here and on this side. So if I want, I can actually just play with the exposure and all these 
sliders and it'll just make adjustments to those areas. See how that works? Obviously that's too much, I'm just showing you an example. So something right there. And that's pretty nice. I'm gonna click off that and I'm gonna go back to my global adjustment. My now I'm looking at it, the outsides are a little dark and the hornet is almost too bright. So now I'm actually gonna go back to the exposure again and bring the whole thing down a little bit. And I'm gonna go back to my vignette and bring that back up. Just a hint, not too much. And just to even it out. I don't wanna make it look too crazy. And there we go. So there we go, buddy. There's a, there's a final image on the Hornet. So here's this damselfly I found. Uh, photographing him at shutter speed 500th of a second, which is, which is pretty good. I usually like to stick around 500th of a second or even faster for macro photography because it's so tough. You know, you're shooting at usually a longer millimeter or something so small. Um, so usually the faster the better. And my f-stop's at 2.8 to get that nice depth of field. Um, I am overexposing him just a little bit, just because he's a little bit darker. Um, so my ISO is at 500, which is still fine for the Fuji X-T3, still looks great. And I'm using a very small focus point, which is great. The X-T3 has great options for, you can make your focus point bigger or really small. And the other thing I like to do when I'm, when I'm focusing on something so small is I'll, sometimes I go into manual focus. And I also have focus peaking turned on, so I know if it's red, I know that part's in focus. So that focal plane, that sliver of a focal plane is in focus. So that r is really helpful in uh, getting stuff in focus like that. And this is when it gets hard. When you start moving like this, it's just, you gotta, you know, just be patient. Try to use that focus peaking to your advantage. Um, like I said, I have that set up as red focus peaking. So I know when that part of them that I want is red. Um, I'll snap a couple photos, but man, it is in and out so fast. And usually I'm trying to get my focus right on the eyes. All right, so this one's pretty cool, just with the damselfly's eye right there and everything. That's pretty, that's pretty neat. So I'm gonna crop this guy first, as I usually do. And I think I'm gonna stick to my 60 by nine. I've been cropping a lot of my image 60 by nine lately, so I'm thinking I'm just gonna stick with that. And I'm going to get him a little left heavy again using the rule of thirds grid. Um, maybe about right there. That's pretty nice. Uh, I'm, let me, let's go a little bit closer. Let's see what that looks like. And maybe a little bit more in the middle on him. There we go. I like that a little better. Eh, I don't know. I go back and forth like this all the time um, as well. See, I sort of like these lines over here. So I'm sort of, I don't know, I'm a little bit in debate on what I want to do. But then you, you know, close up a little bit. Yeah, I'll stick with that. All right, so we're sticking with that. And now again, just as usual, I'm just going to go down the line and play with these. Bring my shadows down quite a bit. Give my whites a little bit of punch. Bring my blacks down. Give it a little bit of contrast. I think I'm going to keep the vibrance pretty much where it is, just to couple uh, just a couple notches up on vibrance um, with clarity I might give it a little bit of punch uh, just a little bit not too much though um, and then let's go all the way down to lens correction and you know I like to play with my vignette so I'm gonna play with that quite a bit remember there's a lot of image still over here on the right hand side so there's not that much of an effect over here but there's a lot of there's a big effect on the left hand side because this is where the image stops um, so my midpoint's a little off, which is fine, because now I'm just going to go to my local brush and just start brushing, uh, sort of creating my own vignette. So I'm going to brush on the left-hand side, and I'm going to make my brush smaller by the left bracket. Click that a couple times, make that brush a little bit smaller, and my exposure's down. And I'm just going to brush over here, just to make that a hint darker. There we go. I like that. And I'm actually going to make a new brush. I'm not going to paint over here right now because I think what would happen if I paint over here, it's not going to, it's just not going to make the adjustment that I want. So 
I know if I make an adjustment over here, I'm going to want to play with it on this play with it on the slider, and that's going to create. It's going to also adjust this. So I I want to leave this one alone. So I'm going to create a new adjustment, and I'm just going to you know go down my exposure a little bit. And now I'm just sort of painting painting by color here. I'm just sort of painting in this area right here. Bring my brackets down and make this brush a little bit smaller. So I'm going to hit left on the brackets a couple times, make that a little smaller. And I'm just sort of painting this area in. And I don't know if I like that because <laughs> it looks a little too structured. So I'm going to bring that back up on how it was. And what if I just do this? What if I just paint? Um, I'm going to make a new brush. What if I just sort of darken this side? Just sort of like that piece of grass that's out of focus. That's a little too much, but that's fine. That's fine. And actually, now I'm going to hover over that, and I'm going to press this point. And if you see what happened there, when I hover over that point, um, no, it should have done it. But, okay, if I hover over that point, it's going to show you my mask. It's going to basically show you the mask that it made um, to what area that's affecting. So I'm going to click on that point. And it's a little dark, so I'm actually going to bring that up a little bit. And that's pretty good right there. And what I'm finding out is I think I don't like this side at all, so I'm actually going to come in and crop even a little tighter. I'm just going to crop that piece of grass that was right there just completely out. And let's see what that looks like. Yeah, see, it's just cleaner now. There wasn't this sort of weird thing hanging out over there. Uh, I like that a lot, a lot better anyway. Um, I'm going to play with the sharpening just a little bit. going to bring that up. It's at 10 right now, so I'm going to bring it up. Uh, let's go, yeah, just about 40 or, yeah, let's just stay there. It looks good on the computer. I'm not sure how it's going to look on YouTube there since it's already compressed anyway with the video. Um, now I'm going to go back to my, or yeah, I'm sorry, I'm at my global adjustment, so I'm going to go back up to my exposure a little bit, play with these sliders one more time, and that should finish this image off. And there we go. All right, so there's that image with the cool little damselfly eye checking you out. All right, thanks. So here's one of the situations where the damselfly is actually walking to me. Um, and I'm trying to, you know, shoot continuous focus, hammer down on my frames per second, and, you know, try manual focus. But a lot of it is um, just practice, and, and a lot of it's just luck as well. And I'm just hammering down. I mean, it's just is trying to get as many shots as I can because he's moving and he's moving fast, especially in macro photography. If anything's moving, it's moving fast just because the small movements are big movements. All right. Well, I think that'll about do it, everybody. So I really appreciate you hanging out with me through these tutorials and uh, showing you a little of my macro photography. And uh, yeah, so I hope to see you next time. All right. Thanks again. Enjoy your 20 seconds is in. Bye.